We drew a long breath, knowing that this was it. This was the end of our life as we knew it. Through the view screen on our rifle, we saw the heavily corrupt Minister of Planetary Defence marching through their promenade with their pair of guards and another whom we'd never seen before. Our job was to put an end to the Minister's life and hopefully cause enough of a power vacuum within planetary governance that our movement would no longer be necessary. We had grown up a slave to our own people, with no rights of our own, and so we had joined a resistance movement when the chance arose. We had been training for months for this one shot. The heat vents on the rifle were loud enough that we would be caught immediately after firing, even if the beam of concentrated light didn't give our position away. If we were lucky, we may be able to hide ourselves in some well-disguised nook or somewhere no reasonable person would hide. However, the more likely outcome would be our getting caught and either immediately executed to save paperwork, or being publicly executed in a month or so. But this was the life we had chosen, and there was no turning back now. We stilled our nerves, made sure that the minister was perfectly lined up for the coming laser, and prepared to pull the trigger. If we'd have blinked, we doubt we would even be able to tell you what happened. Two figures obscured so that we couldn't see them on our view screen, but could always make out a bipedal shape when we squinted through the darkness, set themselves upon the minister and their entourage. As quick as lightning, the interlopers had rendered the minister and their guard to the ground, and then allowed the other, whom we didn't know, to flee before disappearing into the night themselves. It occurred to us in the moment that our task had been completed, there was nothing left for us to do, but we'd always been a curious one and we made a quick decision. We decided to give chase. This was not a good decision. We were not a particularly fast or number quarrel, nor were we gifted with stamina. So when we jumped over the railing we had been posted on, we hit the terrain with a noticeable crack and fell to our knees for a moment before regaining composure. Once we were back to our feet, we began racing in the direction the shadowy figures had made their exit. We took note of the minister's entourage as we passed, noting that all of their necks rested at odd angles and that their gill respirators were draining, meaning that the life-giving gases were not being taken to the body. These Quirrell were dead, which is no different than the night would have ended without our interloper, but to see it so efficiently sent a shiver down our spine. There was no trace of the assassins, winding streets past, alleyways of unsavoury characters who were clearly not our newcomers, and after a few minutes passed, we found them. Or rather, they found us. We were grabbed from behind and dragged into a nearby building. After a brief struggle, we were bound to a chair with our rifle confiscated. There was nothing restricting our vision, so we could see our assailants clearly. Bipeds, around our height, with patches of fur covering various plants of their faces. We couldn't tell about the rest, as they were covered in dark clothing that had seemingly been adapted for our water-covered world but there were a few patches that seemed to identify a group of some sort. The pair were clearly members of the same species, though there were notable physiological differences between the two, suggesting that they were sexually polymorphic. Due to our lack of xeno-education, we couldn't identify their species, and we were too absolutely terrified to ask. It appeared that we didn't have to, though, as the taller of the pair pressed their hand to their throat and spoke in a harsher version of my own language. Do you know who we are? Anything about us at all? We stared, baffled for a moment, wondering why they would ask this before killing us, before responding near a whisper. We do not know who you are, nor your companion, and we do not know who you represent either. There was an exhalation of breath, as the speaker raised one of his appendages and ran it through its hair, and the other rose their hand to their throat the same as the first Pokemon, spoke in a slightly more gentle voice. We are members of the Terran Aggressive Operations Division, though I don't expect you to know anything about that. I am Lieutenant Rebecca Daniels, and my partner here is Sergeant Hans von Kolm, which again, I don't expect you to know what any of that means. What you do need to know is that you and your racket have been making our job extremely, extremely difficult, to the point that I was directed to interrupt your attempted assassination tonight, because your group somehow understands that removing a corrupt politician is a good idea but you have not a single idea how to do it properly. So right now, you're going to tell me everything you can about what you do, and then you're going to come with me. 
There were a few words that we didn't learn the meaning of until later interactions with the humans, but from context, we gathered what they wanted. We told them of the Freedom Alliance, of his plans to re-establish justice on our world, and liberate the slaves. We told them of our internal structure, though we refused to give names or locations of our various alcoves. And finally, we discussed our training leading up to tonight, and our expectations of death, regardless of our success. These Terrans thought for a moment, before the original speaker, Hans, began untying our bindings and ordering in a very kind but authoritative voice. What's going to happen here is that you're going to follow us. We are going to take you to our main operation space in the area, and we will debrief you. Your time with the Allies is over because we can't have you compromise our integrity, but we need locals like you who share our values. Besides, you seem naive and multiple enough that we may make a useful operative out of you yet. Von Kohl let out a series of harsh barks and slapped our back in what was probably meant to be a respectful gesture. Daniels cocked a smile at her obvious discomfort to the action before saying, Welcome to Toad. We weren't sure what this Toad was, but if it meant helping the Terran save our people, we don't think anyone could stop us from joining.